The final part of our history of IHL focuses on the adoption of the IHL treaties, which are still in force today. In other words, we will be briefly look into the origins of many of the rules that we will be studying for the rest of this course. As we have already seen, several IHL treaties have been adopted before the First World War. We may notice in that respect that the 1907 Hague Convention on the Laws and Customs of War, including its annex regulations, is not only an important landmark in the development of IGEL, but is also binding law today. The 1907 Convention regulates many aspects of the conduct of hostilities and occupation in contemporary conflicts. Another major component of the corpus of contemporary IHL treaties are the four Geneva Conventions adopted in 1949, just after the Second World War. The Geneva Conventions of 1949 were adopted in order to prevent the abuses seen during that war. The Geneva Conventions contain hundreds of provisions all dealing with the protection of persons, rather than the conduct of hostilities. The two first conventions concern the protection of wounded and sick in armed forces in the field and at sea, respectively. They result from the revisions of former conventions on that subject. The third one deals with the protection of captured combatants who are entitled to the status of prisoner of war. This is a fundamentally revised version of the 1929 Geneva Convention. Only the fourth Geneva Convention, adopted in 1949, introduced a wholly new category of protected persons, namely civilians. The development of new forms of weaponry and the embrace of a total war philosophy meant that the Second World War affected a far higher proportion of ordinary civilians than conflicts in the recent past. The vast majority of the four Geneva Conventions apply only to international armed conflicts. Only one provision is applicable to non-international armed conflicts. That is Article 3. And as it is written in the same way in all the four conventions, it is generally called Common Article 3. So Common Article 3 to the four Geneva Conventions is a rudimentary provision and grants only the most basic protection. Despite the radical overhaul of the humanitarian aspects of the law of armed conflict in the wake of the Second World War, it quickly became clear that this body of rules focused almost entirely on international armed conflict was unfit for purpose. This was because by the 1970s it was clear that classical international armed conflict were becoming quite rare. Many post-World War II conflict were colonial in origin, where people subject to foreign rules fought for their liberation. These wars of national liberation raised significant questions for IHL. For example, the status of freedom fighters and the qualification of their struggle against colonial regimes. Questions such as these were addressed through the creation of a first additional protocol to the four Geneva Conventions in 1977. However, that additional protocol was mainly intended to complement and update both the 1907 Hague Convention and the four 1949 Geneva Conventions. In other words, unlike previous conventions, it sought to regulate both the conduct of hostilities and the protection of persons in the hands of the enemy. The increasing number of wars that were purely internal in nature, often termed civil wars, 
also undermine the prominence of the traditional international armed conflict. The previous regulations made little provision for internal armed conflicts, and so there was an urgent need for additional protection. This led to the adoption, also in 1977, of a second additional protocol to the four Geneva Conventions. The provisions of this protocol also deal with both the protection of persons and therefore complement common Article 3 and the conduct of hostilities. The initial draft of Protocol 2 prepared by the RCRC contained hundreds of provisions. However, it was significantly shortened during the negotiations between states because governments were reluctant to encourage and all legitimize resistance to their rule. Lastly, a number of specific conventions have also been adopted on a diverse range of subjects. The subject matter ranges from conventions on the protection of cultural property to treaties that prohibit certain weapons. Moreover, texts have been adopted in order for IHL to apply to other actors than states, in particular the United Nations, while non-state actors have agreed to abide to the obligations of IHL through special agreements or declarations. However, when we talk generally about the core of IHL treaty applicable today, we are often referring to the 1907 Hague Convention on the Laws and Customs of War, the four 1949 Geneva Conventions, and the two 1977 additional protocols to those conventions, 